y'all did it. That's all right. Uh-oh. Don't y'all let the birthday girl lead y'all all over the place. <laughs> all right. Good to have you guys on. Welcome to Faith Christian Center World Outreach. This is our midweek service, and kids seem to be having a little fun. Amen. God bless you guys for joining us. Uh, thank you globally for wherever you are, and those of you that are very close who sit at home and watch us, uh, it's time for you to get up off that couch and uh, get yourself involved, uh, not just with your eyes, but with your whole being. Amen. Your eyes are just one instrument in your body. God wants all of your instruments yielded and submitted to him. So uh, we thank you tonight for your time, and uh, may the Lord God bless you real good. You guys can take your seats. Uh, we're going to uh, tonight uh, continue in some of the things that we were talking about Sunday, uh, because it takes a little while to uh, uh, get the right information and the understanding of it so that you might live victorious. And so we've been doing these discussions on advancing toward our enemy. And uh, it's one thing to know that he's a defeated foe, right. uh, but it's another thing to understand yourself. And so uh, when we give these particular lessons to you guys and those that are here tonight with us, uh, we want you to practice observing yourself and looking at the things that you do that are contrary to the word of God, even though sometimes to you it might just seem like it's a weight or something, you know, is not labeled as sin, but anything that can hinder your walk and your advancement toward, uh, I would say, fulfilling the dreams that you have in your life, uh, you need to give it some uh, time and some uh, attention to it to make sure that it is not something that is worked up from uh, your flesh or your old man uh, that is allowed into your future with you. Because some things God does not allow into your future with you, all right? Uh, especially if you have an assignment from the Lord. Uh, you know, you're not just a foot soldier, but you're a leader. Then there are certain things that you really have to watch about yourself and keep in check always, all right? So I asked you guys Sunday uh, to uh, read... Uh, Romans chapter 7, I think I did, and Romans chapter 6, uh, so that you would get an understanding of what we're dealing with when we talk about crucifying the flesh, making sure that the flesh is dead. Paul said, I die daily. So he was doing something daily to make sure that uh, the ingredients of his, of his flesh were not dictating or overriding uh, his particular assignments in life that God wanted him to have. And we've seen some uh, you know, some terrible things happen with people, uh, especially when you're in leadership. You can make one mistake in leadership that can cost you, you know, one mistake. It may not cost you your life, but it can cost you a lot of other things, you know, with your family, with your church, with your businesses, people that you know, one mistake. And so we want to make sure that we do as much as we possibly can in making sure that we, again, we live under God, but we must there are certain things we have a responsibility we must do unto ourselves. So go with me tonight to Genesis chapter 2. We're going to start right here. All right, Genesis chapter 2. Anybody ready to overcome? Mm -hmm. How about to enjoy those seasons of being an overcome? You know, that's where your, your confidence builders come and you go like, wow, man, I got through this. You know, God showed me a way to get through this. He showed me how to make this happen. And here I am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's nothing like that. I'm telling you. And it's not always the way you want it to be. A lot of times, uh, the way God carries us in the new season is nothing like what you thought it was going to be. All right? David never thought he was going to have to face another bear. <laughs> All right? He'd kill a bear and he'd kill a lion. He didn't think he'd have to face another giant like that, but he did. All right? And then he had to face a couple of more like that, you know? living in a cave knowing that you are anointed to be king, all right? That's fighting a bear, all right? And so we look at how God first formed us so that we can help us to understand what Paul is talking about in chapter 6 and chapter 7 of the book of Romans. And he says this in verse 7, all right, after God had made all these other things and, and he's, this is, he's allowing Moses to write some things about uh, our uh, attention from the Lord God in the creation. And he says, And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground. 
right? So it's not the dirt, it's dust, okay? The dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, as I said to you guys Sunday, uh, that Hebrew word is C-H-A-Y-C-H, and it means that God breathed into to the body, the dust body, and when God breathed into that dust body, uh, that dust body responded to the breath of God, which, and that response to the breath of God is what created the soul of man, okay? And now, so we have man is a, a spirit, soul, and body. We, we, we look at that all through the word of God. He always deals with us in threes and everything. And so it says here, man became a living soul, okay? And you'll see out through the scriptures that God, sometimes the scriptures relate to us and say that uh, we are a soul or man's soul or, or soul of this or soul of that. And that's because whatever you are, whatever your soul is, is going to express who you are. Are you with me? Yeah. All right, I'm going to go ahead and talk to these people while y'all think about it. <laughs> All right? Whatever you are, whatever you are, whatever your soul is, it expresses who you are. Okay? And you find a person is nasty and mean and, you know, and vulgar and every kind of thing, then what do they express to them? What, what do you get from them? Nasty, mean. All right, and vulgar, that's what you get from them. Why? Because that's the way that soulish man is, okay? And you'll find, as we discovered Sunday, that even though some people are filled with the Holy Spirit, they can still have things going on in their flesh that they don't realize that they need to deal with. David was like that. Saul was like that too, Paul, uh, the Saul who became Paul. And so as we look at what's inside of us, Okay, we know we're born again. You accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, you know you're born again. But once you get born again, you can ask yourself this question every day. Am I living like heaven every day? No, you're not. <laughs> you can ask yourself. You can ask yourself. You can even ask yourself this question. This is a deeper one. It says that the greater one lives on the inside of us, does it not? Scriptures say that. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Will you ever got a, a picture of who Jesus really is? You know, as far as human beings are concerned, you go to the book of Revelation. In fact, come on, go with me there real quick. Because some people don't think that they have to do anything with their bodies, you know? And they think that I can just do what I want to do and say what I want to say because I'm born again. You know, I'm on my way to heaven. Yeah, well, that's a long road for you. Revelation chapter 1. Let me get over here real quick. Talk about this living soul tonight a little bit. Okay, here we go, here we go. All right, chapter one, Revelation. This is a, a picture of the greater one who lives in the inside of you, all right? And if you get a revelation of this picture, then it's gonna change the way you allow words to come out of your mouth or actions to be done from the thoughts or the decisions that you make, okay? It says, uh, Huh. Mm, ba, 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 ba. Verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, all, the Almighty. Now, I, John, also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom of the patience of Jesus. It was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus. Now, this is what you got to get because this is a picture of the Lord who's in you. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. All right? So his voice can be heard, <laughs> and the closer you to him, the louder it is. And that voice said, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in a book and send it to the, unto the seven churches which are in Asia, Ephesus, unto uh, Smyrna, Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and to Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. So he's in the spirit, and he's got his back, and the voice is behind him speaking to him. And he says, I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the golden seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girded about the paps with a golden girdle. Now that's inside of you. You have a problem with being wealthy, but gold is inside of you. 
because the greater one in you is wearing it. He wouldn't wear something that he wouldn't want you to wear. And his head and his hairs, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like a flame of fire. This is why demons don't like to look in your eyes. But see, they see past your flesh and they see him. See, they see this one in you. See, you just don't see him in you, but you can get a revelation of this is the person that's in you. And when you get these particular revelations about Jesus in the Word of God, it's going to help you every day uh, crucify your flesh. His feet was like on the fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of, the, out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. In other words, that ain't happening no more. All right? And, uh, and I have the keys of hell and of death. And he says, and write these things. So this is who's inside of you when you quote that scripture, greater is he who's in me than he's in the world. See, and if you get a revelation of this, then every time you want to do something nasty, you're going to think about who's standing right there in you looking at you. All right? When you want to say something ugly, you're going to, if you get a revelation of this, because most people don't have a revelation of this, they don't have a revelation of Jesus is coming soon, so guess what they do what they want to do without any recognition of the Lord is going to return. See, they don't have that fear in them of God that he's going to return. So guess what? People do what they want to do. They do the things they think they can do and get, and get by with those things. And yet we say and we quote these scriptures, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world, especially when we want to get into spiritual warfare. <laughs> But you have no idea of this warrior who's inside of you. All right? See, see, when you have a revelation of this warrior, then guess what? You can advance toward the enemy. Remember David on the field? What did he do? He came down and he says, you come at me with a sword and a spear and all this stuff. He says, but I come at you in the name of the Lord. He had a revelation of that. He could see God, you know, that the Lord was with him and the Lord was his strength and whatever. He could see that because he, he killed a bear. I mean, how do you kill a bear with no... With no you know, with no instruments. How do you kill a lion with no instruments? Look at him and go, boo? No, that ain't going to do it, you know? But the strength of God was in him. So you and I have the same strength in us when it comes down to doing things in life. That's why nothing should be a limitation to you. Because if I have this revelation that the Lord is in me, nothing is a limitation to me. See, I can get through anything. See, even though things may press my flesh, and this is where our fight is, they may press my flesh, but I can get through that because I train my soul, man, to, to align itself up with what the will of God wants done. See, and when you do that, then your soul, man, which is between, all right, it's in three worlds, but it's between these two worlds of your spirit, man, and the outside world. So I line myself up now with my spirit, man. I'm going to do what God wants done. And this is why you hear me say, your, your soul man must be renewed the whole thing as Paul said renewing your mind but you have to renew your, your emotions you have to renew your will so that guess what I'm going to do what God wants me to do so now when my spirit man is impressing me to do something my soul man agrees with me now to do what my spirit man wants done and now I become the overcomer because my flesh is only a carrier of all this light and power of God are you guys with me that's, that's all it is I'll give you an illustration of this so that you can see. I ran back and I got a light bulb uh, and uh, I want to drop this, all right? But a light bulb is sort of a parallel of, of your spirit, soul, and body, your whole man, okay? And on the outside, here's the body, okay? And on the inside, guess what? There are wires, okay? Those wires are hooked up to what? The electricity, which gives it the power. When the electricity is on, guess what? Guess what happens? You see the light of the soul. All right? So when you plug this in and you see this bulb on, you got a body, you got the wires inside that are, are, are the, the carriers or the holders or the conduits of the, of the electricity that you plug this into. All right? And when you turn that switch on, again, the Word, the Holy Spirit, when you turn it on, you get light. But that light comes through the body. Are you with me? That light's not outside the body. 
That light comes through the body, which is from your soul. As I said in the beginning, your soul, whatever your soul is, it's going to express itself. That's how people are going to know who you are, what you are like, and whatever. So again, if you're walking around with a nasty word for somebody, or you running somebody down, murmuring and complaining about everything, then guess what? What kind of light is coming out of you? A dark light. That's right. Not a light, not a light that's bright enough for someone to see and say, I would enjoy that. No, nobody wants to be around a black light all the time. All right, are y'all with me? All right, see, there are many illustrations of who you are all the time, but the thing is the enemy uses what we don't know about ourselves to come against us and to cripple our progress, cripple us from getting our dreams and things. So come on, go with me to, uh, as we were uh, Sunday, over in uh, Second Samuel real quick. You have to understand how the enemy uses certain things to, to prompt you or to cause you to, to do what you don't want to do. All right? 2 Samuel chapter 12. All right? Now I got to rush because I got to hurry up and get to Romans so y'all roll now. Come on now. All right? It says this in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 12. This is Nathan talking to David, and I read this Sunday. And he says, there's a rich man exceeding many flocks, a uh, poor man and a rich man. And I'm in verse 2. Uh, had many flocks. And a poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, uh, which he bought up and nourished, and nursed it up and grew it together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and a drink of his own cup and lay in his own bosom and was as unto him uh, as a daughter. And I said, uh, Sunday, you know, I said, sounds like Rudy, you know. And uh, there came a, a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared not to take of his own flock, of his own herd, uh, to dress it for the wayfaring man that had come unto him, but he took the poor man's lamb and dressed it uh, for the man that was coming to him. And David's anger was kindled against the man. And, uh, and he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that have done this thing shall surely die. He shall surely restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, thou art the man. So he, said, he didn't say thou art the king. He took him back to God's relationship with him before assignments came. See, because that's what it's all gonna go back to how we live as men before the Lord, see? Not how you live as a this or that or that or this or God gave you talents for this, but as a man first, see? Because the Bible tells all of us to be men, see? To be men. So be the man that you're supposed to be. And uh, then he says, he, he spoke some things on him. Now, when you look at the story of the traveler, the traveler came from the outside, okay? And, and I, I was called, listen, evil disposition because it comes from the outside, and once it came from the outside, it rested, all right, in the man's mind. And he's talking about David. He's saying, this evil disposition came from the outside, okay, it was a thought. Then you begin to entertain this thought, now it's a guest. So you entertain guests, right? And if you entertain that guest long enough, and if you listen to that guest long enough, then guess what? <laughs> Sooner or later, that guest becomes an owner. That guest begins to tell you how to run your house. And so this is what Nathan is explaining to, to, to David. He's saying this evil disposition came as a traveler. And then he became a guest. After he became a guest, then guess what? He became the owner and he began to tell you what to do. And you yielded to that, okay? Well, it's no different than when the things come and guess what? There are certain things that your, your soulish man will put away because it wants, it doesn't really want to do this as God say do it. You know, I've seen people that could be great people if they would just follow truth, but they won't follow truth. They have to manipulate family members. They have to manipulate other things in their life. They have to lie about things. They have to hide things. They have to do things without any order or, or authority to do things. I've seen people do all kinds of things that go against the way of God, God says to do things. And then guess what? When it's approached or when it's spoken about, guess what? The first thing the flesh wants to do is defend itself because it loves its comfort. I got four people in the house shaking their head like ducks, all right? All right how about all the rest of y'all? Can I get all the rest of y'all to shake your head like a duck too? All right? And so we looked at the story of Sunday. So come on, go with me to Romans chapter 6 real quick. Romans chapter 6. This is not hard to follow again if you will go okay the word of God gives me the, the intellectual knowledge that I need so this is what God thinks about something I go back to that word 
And I, and I go, okay, so this is what God thinks about it, so I'm going to do what pleased the Lord. Now my will is involved and my intellect is involved, but I have to get my emotions invo involved. See? And so when you find yourself in a war that you, what you're going to do is going to hurt you, but you know it's God's will. See, that's when you begin to train your emotions how to follow the word of God because it's going to cost me some hurt, but I know this is the right thing to do. All right? So now I started, I started making my emotions an instrument that becomes an instrument of warfare instead of an instrument of submission to everything that goes on around me. All right? My emotions become a war, a, 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 an instrument of warfare, okay? You're not going to come against what God loves through me. So my emotions now become an instrument, and it stands against the submission that something is trying to override me, like it did with David. See, when that traveler came to David's mind, became a guest, and then he began to tell David what to do, look at all the stuff that David did that got him in trouble and got his family in trouble, and it stayed with David's family. Look at all the stuff that went on. See, and this is, again, everybody's not going to choose to, you know, uh, submit your emotions because that's what you, that's how you feel. That's, that's how you express how you, how you love and how you care and whatever. Most people are not going to allow those things to be, to be trained or challenged or pushed. They're, going to, they're not going to do it. They're going to fight it, especially if you've had some, some traumatic emotional problems when you were a child. And now this, now this preacher is doing something that's, that's coming against the way I feel, and guess what? I, I, I'm just not going to take this, you know? And I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to give my time. I gave my time enough when I go to work every week and I work my 40 hours or I work overtime. I gave my time, you know. It's, it's all kinds of stuff. You, you get up here and the enemy uses those things so that you can't take that ne next step with God because he knows that the Holy Spirit did not come here to put up with you. He came here to train you. See, he came here to, pr to train you up in truth. He didn't come here to play with you or to employ your flesh to enjoy itself and whatever. There are a lot of things that we get to enjoy, to enjoy after we do the will of God and as we do the things of God. But when he first comes into our life, he's not there to rub your head and tell you, oh, you're such a good child and oh, you're so good this and you're so good that. He didn't come to do that. He came to press you so that, guess what? He can put you in the wine press of God and when you come out, you're going to be juice for God. You ain't going to be no great that's going to end up being a prune or something somewhere or in a box being some dry bread. He doesn't do that. He comes to fix you. And most people that I've seen, especially in this church when I preach the word of God and I'm preaching some tough stuff to, because I know why you live the way you live and what you need to know about this, and people, people don't want it because they want to, I want to be good with my friends. I want to be good on my job. I want everybody to love me the way I am. You know, I want you to be my friend. See, friends like you the way you are. But God ain't going to leave you like that. I can tell you that. He doesn't do that. Not at all. Okay? In Romans chapter 6. Oh, let's get over here. Okay, here we go. Verse 6. You can read all of this. I actually got Sunday to read this so you can study this out. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. And how do we serve sin? We serve it through our body. Our soul, man, he decides. And guess what? Just like the light comes on or the dark light comes on. As Jesus said, if the light be in you, be dark. How great is that light? See, the whole deal is, again, we, he's not here to help us to, to, to live 15 or 20 years in sin. And then all of a sudden, you know, when we get to leave out of here, we, we get all religious and we get all righteous with the Lord. And on our bed, we go, oh, Lord, you know, thank you for this and thank you for that. No, 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 no. If you've been in church, especially as long as you guys been in church, okay, and some other people that I know been in church, if you've been in church for a couple of years, let me tell you something. You should already be coming, for, be coming or stepping away from being a child to become a mature person. No, nobody should have to beg you to come to church. Nobody should have to keep calling you and going. Nobody should be telling you, man, you need to praise the Lord or you need to be praying or whatever. No, 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 no. You've been in church two or three years. In fact, we, I think we read this Sunday uh, over in 1 Corinthians where Paul told him, he says, you know, you, some of you are spiritual and some of you are carnal. You know, and I can't, I can't teach you because you're carnal. 
because you ain't gonna, you're not going to handle it, okay? And he separated the two. He allowed us to see. And God agreed with it because the Holy Spirit was the one who inspired the writing of it. So the Lord is letting us know that, guess what? They're carnal Christians and they're spiritual Christians. You know, one's normal and the other one's abnormal, like I told you. Superman and Clark Kent. I mean, you know, that's just the way it is, all right? And some are like that. Some dress up all the time and present themselves as somebody else. And those who are real Christians, guess what? You ought to be like Paul. You ought to be casting out devils. You ought to be speaking in tongues. You ought to be praising the Lord. You ought to be wherever you are, challenging the enemy. You ought to be praying for things to change praying for, the, for Jerusalem, praying for, for all the nations. You ought to be doing things, spiritually doing things, instead of just sitting there talking about everything that's going on wrong with you. As long as you do that, the enemy will make sure that you get enough news every day, that you will have a new newspaper every day to read, and it'll all be about you. It says this, For he that is dead is freed from sin. This is why you have to crucify your flesh. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death has no more dominion over him. Are you guys with me? This is what he was telling John over there. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he lives, he lives unto God. And this is what I was saying to you guys Sunday. We, spoke, we should live unto God. And we live unto God knowing the picture that I just showed you guys of who is greater in you then guess what? There is some fight that you need to now make sure that every day I'm going to train my emotions, I'm going to train my will, I'm going to train my intellect, that it is going to follow the Word of God so that when the Spirit of God in me, all right, the man, the man that I really am, the spirit man, because we were, as unto Adam, first read this, as unto Adam, we were a living soul. Now unto Christ Jesus, we have become a living spirit, all right? So the life that we have now is far greater than the one that we had from Adam, all right? So even if you did your best in that, it was still bad, okay? So we see that we are to live unto the Lord. He says, knowing Christ raised from the dead, dieth no more, and our death has no more dominion over him. For he that died, died unto sin once, but he that liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin but alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Then he says this, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. All right? And he goes on to talk about this. Now, why is he saying all this? Because he knows something. He's learned something about himself. Okay? When he, when he asked the Lord about removing this, this thorn, God said, my grace is more than enough for you to handle anything you need to handle, sir, okay? And so he was learning some things. Paul was learning. He didn't know all of this at, at the beginning when he first started. Did he not get baptized in the Holy Spirit? Uh, excuse me? Did he not get baptized in the Holy Spirit? Yes, he did, all right? Did he not write probably two-thirds of the New Testament? He did, right? But yet he, he struggled with things within, and he wrote the truth about it so that you and I would know that guess what? There are things that you need to be aware of so that you can deal with these things so that you can live this great spiritual life for the Lord that God has called you to live. You know, when I, you know being, being a pastor here for, for a while, I've seen some stuff. I've seen, I've seen wives come in and all of a sudden because somebody's looking at them a little bit different, you know, they, they didn't put... They didn't use the margarine that they looked at. They, now somebody's looking at them through the eyes of butter. And because somebody's looking at them through the eyes of butter, they dissed our whole marriage. Everything that's happened with them, everything that God's created a history with, they throw it away. I don't want that anymore. I want this. You want what? You don't even know what you're walking to. But because the enemy takes you and because your emotions and things aren't settled in the word and your intellect is not settled in the word, you allow certain things to come just like David did. Y'all with me? Yeah. All right. D did David have any wives when he walked up on that roof that night? <laughs> he had more than enough wives. Did he not? All right. But what happened up on that roof? He got up on that roof and guess what he did? He got mesmerized. Butter was looking at him. He forgot about all the margarine he had at home. And Butter was looking at him, and he said, oh, man, that's Butter, you know? And so what did he do? 
He sinned. He sinned. And then later on, he's begging the Lord God, don't take your Holy Spirit away from me because now I see what's wrong. Once he saw what was wrong because the word came to him, all right? Once the word came to him, somebody said a word, once the word came to him and he recognized the word for the truth that it is, then he changed. But how many people will not accept the word when it comes to them? You can tell them all kinds of stuff and they'll say everything that everybody else is saying except what the word says, all right? And this is what I'm trying to get you guys to see, the things that are in your flesh. Paul says this in, in the book of Romans chapter seven. Verse 14, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I'm carnal soul under sin. But that which I do, I not I allow not. <laughs> but what I would, that I, that I do, that, that do I not. What I hate, that I do. You ever been there? Tell the truth, come on now. Tell the truth. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Where's that sin? It's not in the spirit, man. All right? It's not in the spirit, man. It's in his flesh. And the only way that he can deal with it is to allow his knowledge, his intellect, his knowledge base to be built up on seeing God greater, his will doing exactly what God wanted to do, even though it may threaten your life, it may threaten this, it may threaten that, but you have to follow God's will. And even though your emotions are saying, man, I don't, I don't wanna go in no fire, you know? That's where most people, they stop with God because they're not going all the way. The three Hebrew boys, and we laugh about it, we said two Hebrews and one Negro. But those three Hebrew boys, what did they do? They said, listen, you can throw us in the fire. I'm not changing my mind. I'm not changing my word. I'm not, this is the way, I, I'm just letting you know, Nebuchadnezzar, this is the way I feel about it. That's that. And if it's gonna cost me my life, then it's gonna cost me my life. I'm just gonna leave here and go on home and be with the Lord. But that's the way it's gonna be. But most people are not gonna go to that place because see, they're not willing to go that all the way so that they can see God go all the way with them. They're not going to do that. They cut it off, you know. There's a certain level of sacrifice, and that's where I'm going to stop, you know. And I'm not going all the way. I, I'm not going to let my family be threatened. I'm not going to let this happen. I'm not going to let that happen. No, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to let my, oh, no, I got to keep those people in church, man, because they're the biggest givers. They're the biggest sinners. They're the biggest door to the sin coming into your church, but you'd rather have that big door open for sin coming in your church so you can have that dollar bill or that dominion, that denomination coming to you, whether it's a $5 denomination or a $100 denomination. You'd rather have that denomination coming to you, but guess what? But you ain't gonna offend nobody. No, don't, don't step on that toe. Don't say nothing to them. Just let them. Just let them be there. You know, we'll let the Lord take care of it. I mean, I thought you were the Lord, the Lord's Lord in the earth. That's what I thought you were. You know, when you say you're a believer, you are the Lord's Lord. You're the Lord's Lord in the earth. So what you say and what you stand for, the Lord will come and back it up. But if you just go like, well, you know, I'm not, I, can't, I can't let all that trouble happen, man. Man, I can't tell you the times that I've already known people are going to leave. I already know when God tells me somebody's going to die, they're going to die to their inheritance. I already know. Let me tell you something. I know months and months and months, and I've been telling people for years and years and years, it's just something about the way God does things with me. And he'll come to me and he'll show me something, and I'll know somebody's getting ready to leave. I'll know that this is a person doing this or doing that. He will show me upside down. And what do I have to do? I could get there and go, well, no, no, I'm going to fix this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what they want, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a... a, a I'm going to be a back scratcher. No, I ain't going to be no back scratcher. If God said, you going, best thing for me to do is get my foot ready. Because there's something about you that's not agreeing with his plan. See? And I can't go there and just love up on you and be emotional about you. It ain't going to happen. And see, a lot of people, they ain't going to handle that. Maybe it might be some of you. It might be some of you out there that can't handle that. But I'm telling you, if you're going to walk into the presence and the power of God, then everything about your soul, man, has to be adjusted so that it can carry forth the impression from your spirit, man, 
just like we looked at the boat, the electricity would go through these wires. It'll cause the light to take place in the bulb, and then the bulb would shine through the body. And guess what you got? You got a different atmosphere. That's what you have. But again, if you take the wires loose inside, you can plug it up all you want. And you ain't getting no light through here, and all you got is a body standing before you that has no fruit in it. Because it's not, it's not designed to walk around and just be a body. It's designed to bring forth the fruit of God. Are y'all with me in here tonight? I hope I'm helping you guys to understand this, okay? And he says this. I find, oh, let's see, verse, verse 18. For I know that in me dwelleth, and that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would do, that I do. I would not, but, for, but, but, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that which I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law. All right, and what's a law? It's something that governs things. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Is with you right now, all right? For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, that's the spirit man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, all right? So it's coming against his intellect, his knowledge of God, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members, and this is what David did. For the lust of the flesh that was in his members, all right, he knew what he should do, but what did he do? He allowed what he felt to do to supersede that which he knew he should do. And that got him in a whole bunch of trouble, all right, that lasted him through his life and his children, all right? He says, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this, the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So he's telling us there's a way out. Praise God, <laughs> all right? So then, with my mind, I serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So he's letting you know. If you're in the flesh, you're serving the law of sin. All right? So we go to Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Ah, cha-cha-cha. Y'all there? All right. Take a few more minutes to do this. Um, Verse 15. This is Jesus talking to Ananias. Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and children of Israel. For I am sure I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Some of this is because of all the stuff that he did against the Lord killing people, having people killed, and hauling them off to jail, all these innocent people, you know. God will forgive you, but there are consequences to sin. Are y'all with me? See, he'll forgive you, but there are consequences, see. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, put his hands on him. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even the Lord Jesus, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way that thou camest, has sent me that thou mayest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Say what? This man just, he, he got papers to kill people. And immediately there fell from his eyes that it had been scales, and he received his sight and forthwith uh, rose and was baptized. And when he had received meat and was strengthened, then Paul was certain days with the disciples, uh, which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues uh, that, he was, that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them? <laughs> They go like, oh, he can stand up and preach them, but ain't this the same guy that was just a few months ago, man, standing there? Is not this he which destroyed them, which called on, the, on this name in Jerusalem, and have come hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priest? But Paul increased the more in strength and confound the Jews, which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. All right? And so... We see that 
even though Paul was baptized, and this is the beginning of his ministry days, even though Paul was baptized in the Holy Spirit, later on he's writing about how difficult it was to have victory because of certain things that was within him. See, you read the book of Romans. It says, those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. In other words, my mind, my will, and my intellect must line up with the Spirit of God so that I can be led by the Spirit of God to become the sons of God. But if my mind is conditioned by the world and by all the stuff that's in the world and all the stuff that's in the flesh and all these things that we hold on to, the first thing my mentor taught me many years ago, you know, this is a very wise guy. He said, he says, Chastine, you're just fighting a memory. Everything about you is a memory. It's from the old soul, man. You need to live by the spirit, man, now. It's the old soul, man. See, so you got to get rid of all that stuff that you used to do or you used to be like this or whatever. And I'm not saying you don't have a memory of it, but just don't let that memory carry you anymore. See, what you used to be in the world does not matter when it comes down to things in the kingdom of God. See, what Paul was in the world didn't matter. It's who he became on that day. See, and on that day, he began to renew his mind so that he could write to other people and tell them, you need to renew your mind. He began to write to people, and he was the one who formed the, the laws and the, and the doctrines of the church and things. Why? Because he became a new person, and he yielded his soul to the Lord Jesus Christ. See, when he saw Jesus on the, on the road to Damascus, guess what? He carried that picture in him the rest of his life. He couldn't get rid of that. That's why you've got to have these pictures of who God is to you because if God's a little God like this, he's a midget. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If your God is a little midget, guess what's going to happen? First time you get in trouble, you're going to think that midget has run off or somebody ran him off or somebody kicked him off. Why y'all looking at me laughing like that? See, some people think God, they hold him like that, like he's real small. And some people even got him in a box. You know why they got him in a box? Because they laid us on a counter on a table somewhere and they never open it up. And to know God, God's in the Bible. He ain't in your church. God's in his word. And they put him on the counter and they let it be real dusty. And when they get in trouble, they go, let me look at what the word said. No, 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 no. God ain't like that. See, he's bigger than everything. All right? Somebody say, sounds like you're talking to me, Pastor. All right? So come on, go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we're going to stop. We got some other things we got to talk about real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. See, my body gives me a world consciousness. Touches the world. I can touch things. My soul, man, it gives me a self-consciousness. This is who I am. I'm wise. I'm very wise. I'm even wiser than my teacher. It's a self-consciousness, see? And then, guess what? The spirit man gives you a God consciousness. See, all three are still working, but you got to work an instrument so that instrument can bring you what you need, you know? You got a key in your pocket to your car tonight in some form. You know, some of you can stand at your key and it'll start up, and some of you got still got to go open the door up and go out there and put it in and turn it on. But it's an instrument nevertheless, right? Without that instrument, guess what? You're going to need a ride tonight. Are y'all with me? Without that instrument, you're going to need a ride. Just lose that instrument and watch what happens, all right? You'll be calling home saying, you know, bring me the other set of keys or whatever, or, you know, or calling somebody, would you please take me home and I'll come back tomorrow and get in my car? No, you're not, all right? The whole thing is it's an instrument, and instruments have to be used for what they are designed for. And your soul, man, has to be used for what it is designed for. It is designed to be in the middle of the whole world around you, all right? It belongs, it's three parts of you, but that soul man connects, guess what, your spirit man to your outer man. See, just like the light bulb, you know? Some of you, I probably could stick this on some of you and it'll probably light up you so hot for God, right? <laughs> you know, but then some of y'all probably could stick this on and we ain't get no reaction, all right? <laughs> All right, but the whole thing is again, with three parts, and you got to know that the enemy will use that part that has always related to the old Adam to hinder you from living for the new Adam. He'll always do that. First Corinthians chapter 15. Oh, let's see where I want to go right here. 
Okay, here we go. Oh, mm, you have to read a lot of this. Mm, verse 30, 38. But God gives it a body uh, as it has pleased him and to every seed his own body. So you're going to look like something different than everybody else in the resurrection. All flesh is not the same flesh. And there's one kind of flesh of men, another fish, another flesh of beasts, another fish, and another birds. There's also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, uh, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. And there's one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars, uh, for one star different from another star in glory. So also, in, so also is the resurrection of the dead. This is us. This is why it's so important to renew your mind. All right? It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. See? See, that's, that's it's digging deep in us now. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. He's talking about the old body versus the new body, the living soul versus the living spirit. This is what he's talking about here. All right? All right? It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Praise God. See, that's us. See, that's us. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. And so it is written. The first Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a life-giving spirit. See, and this is why we have to put the word to us all the time. And, and our minds, as Jesus speaks to us, he says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and life. He's directing these things to you, all right, to you. And so those things help us to, to fix our minds and fix our positions so that we can allow the Spirit of God now to lead us, all right? As it says in the book of Romans chapter 8, we can allow the Spirit of God to lead us now by our minds being renewed to who we are instead of who we used to be, you know? I used to be sick, but I ain't sick no more, I'm healed. So now my position is if something happens to me, I have to look at it from my position now. I'm healed. I'm victorious. I used to be a, a victim, but now I'm victorious. I'm not, I'm not a victim anymore. So I can't look at myself from that place of being a victim. I look at myself as being victorious. This is the place where I start my fight. I've already won. So why are you here trying to kick against me? <laughs> are you guys with me? I'm already rich. So why are you trying to make me poor? I'm already healthy. So why are you trying to make me sick? See, I'm already above, so why are you trying to make me below? Well, we got to stop. All right? But uh, just to let you guys know, you have to die to the, to the lust of the flesh every day until they die out, until your, your whole spirit man and your whole soul man, that they are connected in such a way that now when I hear God speak to me, there is no limitations because I have the picture, the voice of the greater one on the inside of me. I know he's, he's, he's brighter than the sun. I know that his stand and his feet are, are brighter than the shining of brass that just came out of a furnace. I know his voice is loud, you know, and it's like waters and it'll saturate everything. See, I, I got this picture. So when he's speaking to me and he's saying, do this and do this, then I know that there's a way to get it done. See, I just have to discover all of the things, the ingredients that add to it to make it a whole, all right? So I pray that you guys and those of you out there tonight, uh, that this will add to what you heard Sunday, uh, even this week as I'm talking about this on, on Daily Bread, that you would uh, give yourself the time to study you, you know, we know a lot about, about Jesus. We know about, enough about Jesus to win every fight. But you have to know enough about you because just like David and just like Paul, okay, Saul who became Paul, just like these guys, they had to learn things about themselves while God was walking with them, while God's living through them. And even though we have the victories and we can walk and we can laugh and we can shout and we can, you know, we can talk about the faith that we use for this and that and whatever, but we still have to understand that we were in that, se that season. Now we've, we've come to this season, and then we have to continue to go on to the next season, see? And as we go in progression, 
We're not just working and fighting against evil men or, or wicked people with ideas and things, you know, that they want done around us. But we, get, we begin to get into contact with demons and principalities and powers and things. And we must know ourselves because they have always watched us. And they know your weaknesses. They know you're strong in the Lord. But they also know your weaknesses. And it's those weaknesses that we try to alleviate through the word of God. Even as Paul said, I crucify myself daily. Get rid of the things that are going to cause me to be hindered. So that I do not be, after I preach to everybody else, to be cast away. This is an important thing. Amen. God bless you. We see you here at Faith Christian Center World Outreach whenever you want to tune in. Amen. We'll be here with the Word of God. God bless you. Hallelujah.